message. Meanwhile, early in the afternoon, Dane County Emergency, emergency Management also declared an emergency to make state funds available for any resources. Preparedness starts right now. So we have a, uh, a winter storm warning uh, north of here and an ice warning here. And so I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to possibly save some lives this evening. Um, the first thing you wanna do as soon as you hear there's a warning, and this is good for like tornadoes or tsunamis or whatever, like, tonight a uh, winter storm ice warning thing you want to get out of your house get out of the house go outside get away from the house go out in the woods start a fire if you don't have a woods nearby you should move so get everybody get the kids whoever you got get them out of the house if they don't want to go just go you don't want to be in there houses are tinder boxes power goes out, all kinds of weird shit happens, they collapse, snow's heavy, ice heavy. You don't wanna be in that house. So, as soon as you get outside and you establish, establish yourself a base camp and a fire, drink some alcohol. Now, a lot of people will say, well, you're not supposed to drink alcohol when it's freezing cold out, Nick. It gives you a false sense of warmth. I've given plenty of dollar bills to strippers with fake beard boobs. I rest my case. So now, just ride the storm out. Um, you hope the conditions are really bad. Um, some of your kids, they're probably not going to make it, but that's just natural selection. Well, I can't sit around a fire and not tell a story. So, I'm going to tell a story about a date. And this was many years ago. I went on this date with this girl, and everything went really good. We had a good time. We went out for dinner. We, we hit it off. It was a lot of fun. Well, like shortly, like right after dinner, my belly starts rumbly grumbly, like, like bad things are happening in my guts. I'm like, oh, of course, right? Of course. So I gotta take her home and the whole way there, like I'm starting to, I'm starting to sweat. My gut hurts, I'm fucking cramping. I'm like, I can't, you, you, you know, what are you gonna do? Like, oh, excuse me, uh, that was a really fun date. Can I come inside and just absolutely fucking destroy your shitter? No, you're not gonna do that. So I just gotta get this girl out of my fucking truck and then figure out what I'm gonna do. So we're cruising over to her place. It wasn't that far from the restaurant, but it was far enough to fucking really scare me. Like, I'm like, I'm gonna fucking poop myself. Like, oh, hey, that was a lot of fun tonight. Yeah, how was your dinner? Well, mine was and and just shit myself so we get to her house and, and i can't get out like i get a, if i step out of this truck i'm probably gonna shit myself so she's like sitting there kind of like is this this fucking guy gonna walk me out to my door or what and i'm just kind of like well that was really fun i will call you tomorrow like get the fuck out of the truck get out of the fucking truck <laughs> 
So she finally gets out and kind of looks at me like I'm weird, which I don't blame her. But anyway, she gets out. And I go around the corner, and I remember there was like a bunch of construction going on on, the, on like a frontage road in front of her apartments. So I pull out there. I'm like, oh, yes. At the time, I had this 83 S10 with a 91 Corvette uh, motor, and, and uh, it was... It was a ridiculous little less time. Thing was like a race truck, and I cleaned it all up because I was going on a date. And uh, so there's nothing in there. I'm reaching around. I feel a T-shirt. I'm like, good enough, because there wasn't enough time to like remove a sock or something. This was like the word code red. We gotta go. So I go scrambling over this big pile of dirt that they've been excavating for whatever reason. And I just like, I I probably cried a little. It was just the most like, holy God. I cannot believe that didn't get, like that didn't turn, turn bad. But anyway, I, I do my, my business like crab walking on a pile of dirt like a fucking homeless guy. <laughs> but anyway, I, uh, you know, gotta clean yourself off. Thank God I grabbed that t-shirt. And, as I, and obviously, I, that t-shirt's staying there. That's part of the construction site. And as I'm like getting ready to toss it, I kind of look at it and all I see is the MPPL logo. And it was like my 96 Chicago Open shirt. And I was like, oh, fuck. Well, I took one for the fucking team and I, I had to leave it there, right? And so then I get back in the truck and I drive home and it was just like, oh my God, I almost wanted to call her and be like, hey, but hey, no, I just needed to go home. But then I kind of started thinking about it. I'm like, so now these guys are going to come back and start working on, on this construction project they got going on. And some dude's going to come walking over and be like, oh, hey, man. Well, hey, you guys ever play paintball? Like, oh, what the fuck? Jesus. <laughs> Well, yeah, so anyway, that's how I lost my 96 Chicago Open NPPL t-shirt. Yep.